Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related to this examination. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are stepping into the chapter 2 of the set C of this ISTQB foundation level examinations and shall be looking forward to have some of the good questions to be discussed as a part of this tutorials as well. So let's get started. The next question we have is question number 9 and question number 9 is talking about which of the following is a good testing practice that applies to all software development lifecycle. I think uh, I need to keep it very straightforward here because this we have discussed twice in our other two papers and uh, in the topic and tutorial as well, we told you very clearly that there are four golden keywords and principles or practices which should be followed in any development lifecycle. And by now, you should be very confident with that. So let's read the options directly. Option A says, uh, if for each test level, there is a corresponding development level. Now it's other way around. For every development activity, there should be a corresponding testing activity. B says for each test objective, there is a corresponding development activity. Uh, again, this is also right opposite. For every uh, test activity, there should be, sorry, every development activity, there should be a corresponding testing activity. However, there's no such rule for the objective. Okay, there's no such rule for the objective that every test objective should also have something in development objective. But this, uh, the statement is about the test level, that every test level must have an objective specific to that level. So let's go to option C. Option C says, uh, for every software uh, test activity, there is a corresponding user activity. I think this is just extended in the flow, but there's nothing called as user activity. There are four uh, standard uh, practices which can be applied to any development model. So this is not one among them. So we can easily rule it out. And if I go to option D, option D says uh, for every software de development activity, there is a corresponding testing activity. And I think this is what I have been talking about. And for those who are new, of course, uh, uh, the four characteristics are uh, for every development activity, there's a corresponding testing activity. And those two activities are test design and test, uh, uh, test analysis and test design. Third is uh, the for uh, every test level, there must be objective specific to that level. And the fourth one is tester should be involved as soon as the first drafts are available. So keeping that in mind and context of this particular question, the right answer to this particular question is D, that is for every software de development activity, there is a corresponding test activity, which makes it pretty clear and straightforward. If you remember things, you can make it to the right without any obstructions. So let's move on to the next. The next question we have for you is question number 10. And the question number 10 is talking about uh, which of the following is an example of test first approach to development. Uh, again, I think we, we have to keep this also very straightforward. We have a very clear picture of what is shift left approach from our tutorials. Uh, shift left approach is anything which is uh, an activity which happens earlier than expected. And uh, moreover, it totally depends on the option here. The option here is talking about uh, the test first. Sorry, I was talking about shift left. It is supposed to be test first approach. So I just misread it. So test first approach again uh, is pretty much where we write the test cases and then the coding happens on basis of that. And we have learned the three methods there that is stress driven development, behavior driven development and acceptance test driven development, which should make it any point of time clear that what exactly is the right answer. Okay, so let's look at the options we have with us. Option A says component test driven development, integration test driven development, system test driven development, and acceptance test driven development. Look at the craziness of the options given to you. If you forget or you have not read this very carefully from your syllabus, you would think, oh, it's in the flow, like four levels of testing. So maybe all four are there. And which one is not there so but if you have remembered like tdd bdd and atdd there is only one which is talking about the level as well which is acceptance test driven development but this has nothing to do with the test levels this is to do with the acceptance criteria of a story right it's not about component integration system and acceptance it's more about the acceptance criteria which is written for a story and that's where the right answer for this particular question is very straightforward and that is 
D, that is acceptance test driven development is one of the example of a test first approach in the given options here. So that's the power of your study uh, when you go through the syllabus and have the confidence of reading things carefully and then picking up to the right answer. Okay, let's move on to the next question. The next question we have is question number 11 and that talks about which of the following provides the best description of the shift left approach. Now, again, I think we were talking about the same thing in the earlier one. So shift left approach is something where you try to prepone an activity than the regular schedule time. You know that these are the activities which happen at a particular point of time. But if you try to do it earlier than their expected timeline is what you call it as shift left approach. But not those activities which generally happen earlier in the life cycle are not called as shift left. OK, the ones which you prepone explicitly, you call them as shift left approach. So let's go and read the options. The option A says, uh, when agreed by developers, manual activities on the left hand side of the test process are automated to support the principle of early testing saves time and money. Multiple conflicts, uh, agreement with the developer may happen because you're in agile, that's fine. We talk about automating it. Automating it is not about shifting left, okay? automating is not about shift left because automation can happen at multiple uh, points uh, in the entire process and you can automate even unit testing you can automate system testing you can automate regression testing so there are multiple things which can be automated at every point of time so automation is not the subject which talks about shift left and the third point is if you see here it says principle of early testing saves time and money Early testing saves time and money is more about static testing. That is conducting reviews before dynamic testing. And that's how it saves your time and effort in terms of uh, not finding statically related issues at a later level, right? For example, in dynamic testing, you should not find defects related to requirement misunderstanding or incomplete requirement, etc. That's the point. So, you know, multiple conflicts are there which should help you to remind that this is not the right answer. And uh, automation has nothing to do with it. Right. Let's go with option B. Option B says where cost effective test activities are moved to be performed earlier in the software development life cycle to reduce the total cost of quality by reducing the number of defects found later in the STLC. So look at this definition, which is crisp and clear, talking about testers being involved early in the life cycle, where we generally know that uh, we prefer to do as much dynamic testing as possible and try to find as many defects as pa as possible again. But if involved earlier, we can reduce the number of defects. We can cut the cost on fixing the defects and reduction in overall quality cost or cost of quality. So this looks a very sensible option. Let's go to option C. Option C is saying uh, when they have spare time available. Spare time is a tricky word here. Testers are required to automate test for regression testing starting with component test and component integration test. I think two straightforward things, right? When you have spare time, then you do automation. Now automation is the need of the project or demand of the project. And it's not about the spare time, it's a deliverable, right? You have to do it if you're in agile or if you're working as a deliverable for regression testing, you will have to do it. So it's not something which is optional. And when you have free time, then you do it. Now. It's a need or demand of the project which you take care of. And yes, it will happen for everything like regression, competent testing, or even competent integration, but it has nothing to do with the shift left approach, right? Let's go to option D. Option D says, uh, when available, again, when available, testers are trained to perform tasks early in the SDLC to allow more test activities to be automated later in the SDLC. Now again, later, the word later is taking us back again that if it is supposed to be done later, what exactly shift left is for? And second is again, the concentration is on the word automation and automation has no definition to that of like shifting left. Yeah, if you say I'm trying to automate things earlier in the life cycle to reduce my effort later, but the option should say that. Option should say that. It's not gonna tell you that uh, just because we are automating, it's called a shift left approach. So again, option D, has a very trickiness as a part of it. So if you see this once again, it says the testers are trained to perform tasks early in the SDLC to allow more test activities to be automated later than how it is beneficial. Anyways, with that being said, I think we are very clear and very straightforward. 
to the right answers of this question, which is B, where cost effective test activities are moved to be performed earlier in the software development life cycle to reduce the total cost of quality by reducing the number of defects found later in the SDLC is one of the right answer or right opinion about what do we mean by shift left approach. I think that's how things makes it clear, but the understanding plays a vital role. You can never get to such right answers by referring some stupid dumps. Okay. You need the knowledge. You need the understanding. You need the context to be clear to determine what exactly is the right answer. Anyways, put together, that's all what we had from this particular tutorial. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.